Hi, my name is Shane Kuo. I'm here today to present my abstract, Delayed Presentation of Contralateral Carotid Cavernous Fistula, written by me, Dr. Claudia Mercano, Dr. Carla Obio, and Dr. Edgar Bustamante. Carotid cavernous fistula is an abnormal passage from the carotid artery to the cavernous sinus. The associated clinical manifestations are a result of the important structures located in the cavernous sinus, which include symptomatology related to cranial nerves 3, 4, 5, 1, 5, 2, and 6. The fistulas themselves are categorized into high versus low flow and can arise due to a variety of etiologies. These fistulas can be formed either directly secondary to trauma, tear, or indirectly from the rupture of dural branches of the carotid arteries that are weakened by another medical disease process or genetic condition. Trauma is the most common etiology for carotid cavernous fistulas, accounting for approximately 75% of cases. These patients typically have visual disturbances, orbital pain, cranial nerve deficits from either of the five nerves mentioned earlier. The gold stand standard imaging for diagnosing these fistulas is with a cerebral angiogram. Once identified, the treatment goal is to completely occlude the fistula while still maintaining normal flow to the internal carotid artery. Depending on the kind of fistula, high flow versus low flow, treatment and management may vary. Spontaneous closure and compression treatment may be plausible for low flow fistulas. However, surgical intervention is the most definite option. Our patient is a 55-year-old male with no significant medical history other than a previous motor vehicle accident around three months ago that resulted in double vision of the left eye, headache, and vertigo. At that time, he was following with an ophthalmologist who diagnosed the patient with left optic nerve damage. He never had any symptoms in the right eye. He presented to the emergency room with a chief complaint of one day of right eye swelling associated with difficulty with opening his eye. He reports increased throbbing pain that mildly improves with eye drops pre prescribed for his left eye. The patient denied any additional trauma, fevers, chills, headache, nausea, or vomiting. Upon arrival, the patient was a febrile, hemodynamically stable, and saturating while on room air. Physical exam was remarkable for right eye chemosis, decreased acuity, and extraocular movements. Ocular exam was notable for 2070 in the right eye and 2100 in the left eye. CBC, CMP, ESR, and CRP were unremarkable. Orbital CT scan with contrast showed prominent, dilated, and contrast opacified right superior ophthalmic vein. At this time, there was concern, so a confirmatory CT head was performed. Illustrated bilateral cavernous sinus fillness with large dilated right ophthalmic vein. You can see that in figure one. At this time, interventional neurology was consulted, who planned to perform an angiogram with plans for immediate transcatheter embolization. Transcatheter coil embolization was performed with a transarterial approach and resulted in successful placement of coils in the right cavernous sinus. This resulted in normalization of the right ophthalmic vein flow and decreased congestion of the right side. However, a left ophthalmic vein was thrombosed with the remaining left internal carotid to the left internal sinus fistula draining into the inferior protrusal vein. The patient tolerated the initial procedure and noted marked improvement of headache, eye swelling, and vision over the following days. A repeat angiogram was performed and the left-sided cavernous sinus fistula was replaced by a pseudoaneurysm. At this time, two pipeline devices were placed and the patient was started on dual antiplatelet therapy. Endovascular intervention is typically the first-line treatment and has the highest cure rate. The prognosis for these fistulas is overall good, However, the recurrence is rare and a majority of symptoms associated with these fistulas will resolve within hours to days of the proper treatment and management. Upon our literature review, there are very limited cases reports that present in delayed contralateral carotid cavernous fistula as the vast majority are ipsilateral. Carotid cavernous fistulas can be categorized into high versus low flow and the gold standard is a cerebral angiogram. This, the management, however, will depend on the type of fistula. Spontaneous closure may be possible for low flow, however, surgical intervention is the most definite option, with endovascular intervention typically being first line. The majority of the symptoms will, will resolve within hours to days of treatment. Given the scarce amount of reported literature and this, with this particular and unique presentation, we would like to highlight the importance of physicians to include delayed contralateral carotid cavernous fistula amongst their differential diagnosis.